I joined Atlassian through an acquisition, actually, as part of the Insight acquisition, if anybody's heard of the Insight app for asset and configuration management. So that's kind of my area of expertise. And then Kate, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Um, so I'm Kate Clavitt. I also joined Atlassian via an acquisition. Um, I was part of the Ops Uni team that was acquired a few years ago. Um, and Charlotte and I work together on the same team with uh, Jira Service Management. And yeah, I, uh, I'm really grateful that this is a really cool one because it's so many different community groups that banded together to have one event, which I think is awesome. Um, and we're excited to present for you. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, if it's okay for me to share my screen. It work now, yeah. Um, Stop mine. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that's worked. Just one remark, there's a Q&A box at the bottom that should be working. So if you have a question and don't want to forget it, uh, type in the Q&A box, I would say. Yeah. yeah, or use the raise hand. Yeah. Um, great, then I'll, I'll get started. Um, so yeah, as, as mentioned, we're going to give you a brief introduction to Jira Service Management. So in this presentation, we're going to cover some of the background um, that led to us creating Jira Service Management, the challenges that we've seen um, in many organizations that we work with, and how that has shaped Jira Service Management. And then we'll talk about some of the challenges that JSM helps solve um, within the ITSM world. And then Kate is going to end with a live demo of JSM. And then there should be plenty of time for questions and discussion at the end. So um, the background, from speaking to IT teams across all our customers, we know that there's a lot of pressure to support companies' digital transformation initiatives. And I think 2020 especially probably highlighted this more than any other year. Companies have to be able to support the delivery of digital products and services faster than before without introducing risk. They have to ensure that these critical business applications and services are always on, or they're gonna run the risk of losing customer trust and potentially at worst case going out of business. For example, the fitness app Peloton saw a 94% jump in subscriptions last year when the pandemic shut down gyms around the world. This is a really excellent example of a company that relies entirely on their always on service, but also they had the ability to change very quickly based on this sudden demand in the market. The third point is more around um, making sure that the, these services, the experience of using these services is absolutely flawless. And this is both for employees and customers. Another great example from the pandemic is the online services healthcare providers set up so quickly to give people the information they needed and reduce the number of people going to visit their doctor um, or to clinics. So an actual example, um, Health Direct Australia set up a new coronavirus helpline in just five days, which I think is quite amazing. And they used Jira Service Management to do this. So they now have 3,500 call center representatives using JSM to root questions to the correct people and make sure their customers get the information they need. So what we learned from a lot of this talk with organizations is that speed is absolutely critical. And actually this is backed up by Gartner. Um, they predict that by 2023, 80% of ITSM teams that don't adopt an agile way of working will get ignored or bypassed in favor of more agile ways of working that you know people are creating themselves off in some department elsewhere people are always going to find the path of least resistance to do what they need to do and itsm teams are understanding that they need to keep up with this so what we're seeing in response is that companies are shifting the way their infrastructure and operation teams are organized they're either starting to forge closer ties with dev or DevOps teams, or they're actually embedding dev and engineering 
into their ITSM or their IT ops teams so they can work together. This is a great step, but customers are also telling us that they feel handcuffed by the tools that they have today. Very often we hear that it's maybe not flexible enough. Um, so if there's a new business need, they can't adapt very quickly. We hear that it reinforces knowledge silos and that work can stop when you know, an expert goes on holiday or something like that. And then finally, we hear that silo tools can cause a lot of friction between dev and IT. Um, the separate teams don't have the context of the other team to understand exactly what's going on. And that's gonna slow down the um, speed at which issues can be resolved. So this is kind of the industry background that we're seeing and is what, and is what has led us to Jira service management. So Jira service management is designed to unlock high velocity teams and solve these challenges. It, the idea is to bring dev, IT and business teams together so they can deliver, operate and support execution, uh, support the execution of great services. And I think it's a very logical step for us at Atlassian as we're known for our agile solutions that help teams plan and track work. Um, in the past, we've created DevOps solutions to help dev and reliability teams to flow code through to release. And so now we've kind of gone a step further and we've expanded into IT service management for post-deployment capabilities. Um, so with GSM, the idea is that you can deliver value faster without the cost and the complexity of traditional ITSM tools. Make work more visible. Jira is open, it's collaborative. And so that gives people the context that they need um, all within the same environment to make better decisions. And we've aimed to create something that is gonna make dev and ops work together without so much friction. We believe that we have the heritage in development to really, really understand this kind of use case. And with JSM, you can seamlessly send business requests through to development, onto operations, back again, as the situation calls for. So if we take a slightly deeper look, um, the flexibility of the product um, is, is absolutely key. Um, we want to make sure that it's easy for every team to be a service team with JSM, whether it's IT, HR, facilities, finance, marketing, legal, whatever you like. No team is the same. And so GSM is there, or the, the ability is there in GSM for every team to customize their projects, their workflows, their processes, et cetera, to how they need it. Um, with the kind of making work visible and the collaborative working, we've made sure that context is visible throughout the tool. So for example, with an incident, an incident manager has everything that they need to respond to an outage and resolve instance faster. Um, they can quickly see which impacted service they have or the incidents that are related to a major incident. And then they can dig in, explore some of the root causes of the incident all within JSM. And then finally, oh, um, Jira service management is built on the exact same platform as Jira. So um, teams can share work uh, very smoothly. And for example, we built deep integrations between popular CI and CD tools um, and Jira service management itself to speed through low risk changes through auto approvals and deployments, but it will then send the high risk changes for approvals. So it's, it's helping the workflow become faster and remove some of that friction, but it's still making sure that all the, um, the paper trail essentially is there so that all changes are registered um, that's good for compliance and risk. So that is kind of a quick introduction to JSM. Um, I will now hand over to Kate, who's gonna take you into the demo. If I can find my mouse to stop sharing. <laughs> That's the thing, Zoom is so reliable, but I feel that once I share my screen, I lose the mouse cursor always. Yeah, I think you can um, 
overrule me so you might have to do that because I genuinely I know it's there but I just don't have a cursor yes I got it <laughs> brilliant thank you um so hopefully you can all see my screen okay yeah okay good so the way that I like to approach the demo is to start from the perspective of a service desk agent and then take you through siphoning through uh, customer requests all the way through to managing the incident um, and what that looks like because it really helps to highlight what we've introduced as part of JIRA service management that's new and it, it's, it touches on all that context that Charlotte was talking about. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm assuming the role of a service desk agent and I'm coming to check the customer service desk project. Um, these are requests coming from external customers. And as you know, the customers could be external outside of your company, or they could still be your customer and internal to your company. So Sammy's starting his work day and he sees like there are all of these issues open around billing and a profile access problem. So before he goes through to decide if this is incident worthy or, my goodness, sorry. I have to have my Slack open because it's part of the demo, but um, the incident issues are all coming through the Slack message as I've just opened them a moment ago. So sorry for that. I'm just gonna snooze it. Oh, he's closing all my alerts, brilliant. Um, let me just make sure my incident's still open. Yeah, it is. Okay. That's the problem with sharing a demo account, friends. You never know. Somebody's going to ruin your demo by closing your alerts and your incidents for you. Okay. So let me continue. Now you know it's truly live and I'm not fooling you by showing a video. <laughs> okay. So back to the service desk agent. I see all these issues. Um, I can assume they're related, but without digging into them, I don't know for sure. So that's where the ITSM project comes in handy. So just for ease of use, I'm just going to open another tab here. So we'll go into the IT service desk, um, ITSM service desk. And we can take a look. This is the piece um, on the left side that shows all of this context we're talking about. So on the menu, you have queues, service requests, incidents, problems, changes, services, which has parity with Ops Genie. So if any of you are using Ops Genie, you'll see that if you add a service in Ops Genie, it will appear in Jira Service Management and vice versa. So that's something that's new as a result of this. You have access to view open Ops Genie alerts. I'll just take a moment so you can see recent alerts in Ops Genie. You also have access to the on-call schedule. So if I were the service desk agent and I needed to determine who else was working or on call to help me out in the event of an incident, I could take a look at the on-call schedule, see who's on call from the development team. Is there someone I can reach out to if I need to? And so there's more of that context there as well. So the thing that I'm gonna do as the service desk uh, agent is I'm gonna check open incidents. So if you're familiar with Ops Genie and you're familiar with what was your service desk, you'll know that they both have a concept of incidents. So Ops Genie's incidents and your service desk's incidents were slightly different. Um, they were built as two separate products now we're bringing them under the Atlassian umbrella and we're really working to make that a more cohesive experience now that Apps Genie has been acquired. Um, so in order to make it clear the difference between what is an Apps Genie incident and what is a Jira service desk incident, we call them major incidents. So in this case, a major incident is something that you would open or create in the event that it's a major service disruption and you need the team to be notified right away to get working on fixing it. So Ops Genie does the dispatching piece and we will notify people based on source, content and time 
and the on-call schedule, who's on call, and they can receive a phone call, a text message, or an SMS rather, an email, or a mobile application push notification. Uh, you'll also get a notification in the Slack channel, which was demonstrated when I started by all of those annoying Slack pingings that were coming through the chat. So the key here is the dispatching piece. So there are no open incidents. There are no ongoing major incidents. So at this moment, Sammy realizes that he should open an incident. Uh, he should create an incident and then associate all of these service desk issues to it. So we're going to report a system problem and we'll say multiple customers unable to access profile. Um, and let's go make sure that we're opening an incident ticket. And of course, if this were a true incident, I would include a lot more context in the description, but just for the sake of going quickly through the presentation, I'm just going to copy paste. And we can link issues. So those, all those service desk issues that we saw before in the queue for the customer service desk, we can associate those. So we have the full context of the incident attached to the incident ticket. And then again, you would certainly fill in all of these fields or at least most of them if this were a true incident, but just for the sake of the flow of the presentation, I'm just gonna click create. And I will refresh. Just gonna give it a minute. Oh, my colleague closed it on me already. Okay, brilliant. So let me try that again. Okay, so what we'll do here, um, let's go back to the queues, um, go to the customer service desk. And the thing that I, the thing that I wanted to show you here uh, was the bulk actions, but my coworker closed all of my, um, closed all of the bugs I opened. So I'm just gonna open some more. Who is it, Kate? Cause I can ask them yeah, to- Can you just like Ken and just tell him to stop whatever he's doing? Sorry for the lack of flow here, but I'm just going to create a few tickets. It's just not interesting if I show you with only one. So, um, or change billing info. Okay. So let me just refresh. So they're all in the queue. And the cool thing about bulk actions is that instead of having to go into each one of these issues, I can assign them all to myself. in one quick click instead of having to go to each one or click into each one, which would save me a lot of time. So let's try this incident thing again, since Charlotte has asked my coworker to leave my work alone. <laughs> and we'll be able to create an incident. Um, so let's create a major incident just to save time. We'll start right from here. Um, And if 
customers are unable to access their billing profile. We'll just copy paste again. Um, and we'll move this through, create this issue. And click into the issue. Okay, so then we're going to link the various service desk requests. Here again, um, and click link. So now we've got them all linked and we have this context here. So then we're going to go back to incidents, ongoing major incidents. There are none. So we need to create one from our open incident. And I'm just gonna, I think what he's done is he's created some sort of automation. Um, so I'm gonna transition it back to, ah, darn it, didn't work, okay. So we're gonna create an ongoing major incident and link everything. And then we'll go back. So we've got this incident. Uh, we have the con the full context, although it seems that this one is not the right one. So sorry for that. Let me just go back and we've got all of my open tickets. And what we're going to do is link these. And link those issues. Brilliant. And we'll go back to the customer service desk. And when you click into this issue, you'll see that it's linked to that incident as well. So if you're going back and you're speaking to customers and making sure that everything has been resolved, you are able there to see, okay, so folks have, this is how many folks had that issue. This is how many people, if you're assigned to all the issues that I need to follow up with and make sure that everyone's in the know about this particular thing. Um, so this is the context that I was talking about that's really helpful, especially because oftentimes incidents are closed prematurely and you need to reopen them later on. Um, so we'll see these resolved incidents. A lot of them have similar, uh, the login screen's not working, billing service isn't working, unable to access billing profile. So you're able to look at all of this um, and see that context as well. So you can determine, okay, well, what happened in this incident? Was there something still related? And then because this incident is related to the current one, I wanna create a major incident from it, um, just so that way all of that information is associated still. So we're going to try again and hope my coworker doesn't close it on me and create a major incident. So what that does, and you can hear the Slack going crazy, is it opens, it comes through to Slack. So we do have the opportunity to integrate with Slack here. And you can see the full context of that alert. So this alert is the one that goes out and notifies all the team members. And you have the opportunity to acknowledge, assign it, et cetera. So we know that there's an incident underway. So, we've got that ops genie major incident. So let's click into that. This is the open one. 
And now that we're in Ops Genie, this is called the incident details piece. Um, so this has all of the details related to the incident. You'll see here that you have impacted services, Bankley's listed there in the event that while investigating, you realize there are other services also related, you can add them. So you keep that context. And then you're able to investigate potential, uh, you're able to correlate deployments, code deployments, as the potential cause of the incident or to have had a potential impact on the incident, which I'll show you in just a moment. You also have the ability to open JIRA software issues. So perhaps you do find that a Bitbucket deployment is responsible. You're able to create a JIRA software issue directly from the incident details in Ops Genie. And then this links to all of the JIRA service management requests. You can add additional ones as well um, in the event that there are related incident tickets that you would like to include here. The postmortem will hold all of this information and record it while you're going through the orchestration of the incident. Here we have the communication options, which include the incident command center, incident status updates, and the ability to create a Slack channel, which I'll do in just a moment. You also have the full timeline of when the incident was opened, who was responding, and which services were added. So this again is all recorded for the postmortem in the end. So let's create a Slack channel. And I'm going to name it, uh, um, well, I don't wanna, we'll just call it a, big fun community event because we have so many folks uh, joining us from so many different places. So once I create that Slack channel, the Slack channel is designed for its communication during the incident. So once I click into here, um, I'm the only responder since it's a one person demo show for you today, but Anyone who's listed as a responder for this particular incident will be automatically added and invited to this channel and they'll get a notification just like I did. Um, so I'm going to pretend that as the service desk agent, I'm talking to the developer team and say, um, hi, the development team is looking into recent deployments. We'll update you soon. So I can add that to the Slack channel and then add this to the incident timeline. So that will be recorded later on for the postmortem. But let's go back. And I know I've been playing the role of the service desk agent for most of this, but let's take a moment and pretend that I'm playing the role of the developer. I'm going to take a look and perhaps I'm not the developer, I could also be the on-call IT ops person. Uh, the possibilities are endless, but I would have access to this, which is called the incident investigation view. So what you can see here is the ability to filter by different environments. Right now we have Bankly and, Bam uh, excuse me, we have Bitbucket and Bamboo available. And then I can also adjust based on how, how far back I'd like to go six hours, one week, and then you can continue to go back from there. Um, let's go back to six hours. And you can see the different deployments that have occurred. The key down here shows what successful deployments will look like, what failed deployments will look like, incidents and potential causes. So if I select a deployment as a potential cause, and then I scroll down here, it will show you um, the redeployment option. So you can also redeploy. So the button takes is available in Ops Genie, but it comes from Bitbucket or Bamboo, depending on what you're using. If I select that deployment, I can see which developer was responsible for it. And I can reach out to them and ask them for assistance on the incident. Um, so I'm gonna add that as a potential cause. And then it's gonna show here. And you do have the ability to add multiple potential causes if it's determined that that's the case. But for now, I'm gonna go back into the Slack channel. And I will say, uh, Dante identified the potential 
because they will redeploy. It would take 15 minutes. So I can again add this to the timeline for recording purposes. And so now let's assume that the incident's resolved, they've confirmed it, the deployment's been pushed out, et cetera. So I'm gonna resolve the incident. That immediately shows here in the Slack channel. And then I go back to Apps Genie. I'm just going to quickly refresh. And it shows as resolved here. Um, and if I go to create a postmortem, all I have to do is fill out this template. The timeline shows all the details. Those, these are the pieces from the Slack conversation that we'd added. There's also uh, Jira software issues. I can link issues down here if I want. And then this attachment, which is loading, is the post-incident analysis report, which just shows you how long it took to resolve, who was involved in resolving it, were stakeholders notified. These are just very high-level parameters that really help you determine how successful your incident response is. So now that that's settled, we're done in Ops Genie. Um, we, we've closed out the incident, we resolved everything. So let's go back to our queues here. Um, so let's assign these to Sammy. And then we can transition them all at once. So this is that bulk actions piece I was talking about earlier. Just a moment, my internet's being a bit slow. And then we will transition them to resolved. And I have the ability to respond to the customers on all of these tickets in one click. So we'll say um, fixed. Hi there. The, there was an incident that caused this behavior. Your account should be fully functional. Please reach out if you need additional. Don't want any spelling errors going to our customers. So I can update all four of those tickets all at the same time and resolve them all at the same time. And now the, the queue is empty. Um, the other thing, so that's the incident piece of it. The other item I wanted to show you very quickly, um, just by going into a change record. I had one open, oh, here it is. So this is a change record that was created in Jira Service Management. The cool piece of this is um, you can see the deployment here. And if I click into it, it will take me, oops. If I click on the link, I can go into the Bitbucket deployment, but you've got the affected services. You have all the information there. All you need to do to generate this record is when you are pushing uh, code to deployment, you simply need to add the, um, this Jira software issue key in the commit message, and it automatically will generate this change record. Depending on the change, um, if this is a normal change, you'll need approval from various folks. So it will automatically route this change to those people to approve it. In Jira Service Management Premium, it, we will gate the deployment. So if it is a lower risk change, and you just need a record for the change record purposes, it can be auto approved, but all you need to do is add that Jira software issue key in the commit message, push to production. 
it will automatically go to production. And do your service management premium, if it's a higher risk change, it will not be moved to production. It will instead be routed to the approvers. And then once the approvers receive it, it will go to production. Um, so that deployment gating is again, one of those things that saves a lot of time, but provides visibility between the different teams. Um, so that's it for the live demo. So we have some time to take questions. Um, I see that there are already some in here. We've got a fair few, most are opt related. Good, those are my favorite because that's what I know the most. <laughs> um, does this magic work with GitHub and Microsoft Teams as well? Um, I'll type an answer too, just in case people prefer that. Um, which, so the magic I'm guessing is the chat ops piece. Uh, ops Genie integrates only with alerts for MS Teams. Um, in terms of GitHub, it's it's not available for GitHub yet if you're talking about the incident investigation dashboard, um, but we are working on adding other tools to the incident investigation dashboard. MS Teams is not on the roadmap for the next six months, but we are discussing adding that um, functionality shortly. Um, this question is from Frank. Will you have automatic linking of tickets related to the commits identified in the major incident in Ops Genie? Um, so let me just think about that for a second. So you're asking if you automatically, if you can automatically link the JIRA software issue for the commit to the major incident in Ops Genie. Um, I don't believe that functionality is available automatically as part of the way that it works now. It's probably possible with um, automation for JIRA or something of that nature, but out of the box functionality at the moment, no. Um, but that is a great question and a really good thought as well. Um, next question. Do you plan to have the issues and the deployment linked automatically into the post-mortem? Um, so I think that would be, so you're automatically linking all of the issues. Would there be any manual linking in that? Because I think my thought is sometimes with machine learning, two things look related, but they might not be. Um, so I don't know that we want to make everything totally automatic, um, but that is a good question. And just let me know if I misunderstood your question. And then um, can I define SLAs per application and how can I filter measure on this? That's a good question. I'm sure you can. Oh, sorry. Maybe take this one. Um, I'm assuming that application kind of means affected service in this context. Um, I believe it's not possible with Jira service management itself, um, but something you can do with the insight um, asset and configuration management tool is you can actually set your SLA per particular asset or CI that is linked with the issue. This is only available for server in DC right now or data center right now, but it's something we hope to have uh, for cloud as Insight becomes more integrated into um, Jira service management itself. I can't see it being available for cloud anytime in the near future, but hopefully, um, say in the next year or so. Awesome. And you can filter and measure on that. <laughs> um, Mario, can you give us a bit more information? I don't know that I, um, un I don't know that I fully know your question. I don't know if you're asking, is this available for next gen projects for data center? If that's your question, the answer is no, it's um, only available for um, ITSM project. But if I misunderstood you, please let me know. I think he wants to know if the next gen project type will come to data center somewhere in the near future. Okay. Um, let me ask someone on that team and get back to you. Um, and I'll just make a note of that. So that way 
as long as it's okay with you, Mario, if I email you or message you, um, just let me know that that's all right and I'll get you an answer.